Coming up on Cruise In Collector's Edition, we visit the guy's dad's. One has a Ford. It had its own and became like a member of the family. And the other a Cadillac. It was advertised as W.C. Fields' personal car. Then it's Buicks, Buicks, and more Buicks, capped off with an iconic pink Cadillac. Elvis's mom would be proud. That's all coming up this week on Cruise In Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics. Cruise In Collector's Edition starts now. Welcome to Cruise In Collector's Edition. Today we're going to check out a 1928 Cadillac that my father and my inspiration is restoring. But I'll let him tell you about that. We're also going to head over and see my dad, who has a 1930 Ford Model A Coupe that he's owned for nearly 50 years. Then we'll check out a few Buicks we have in our collection. We also have an iconic pink Cadillac for you to see. So let's get started. What we got here is a 1928 Cadillac. It's called a 341A series. Uh, I purchased this car approximately three years ago. Luckily, when I purchased this car, it was complete. I started to do a cosmetic restoration. Once I started working on the engine, I discovered that it needed to be rebuilt. Uh, a friend of mine has rebuilt the engine. Uh, I installed the engine, put the accessories on, and we've got it running. Uh, the person I bought it from brought it from cruise auctions back in the late 80s or the early 90s. It was advertised as W.C. Field's personal car. Uh, at that time, uh, Universal Studios was selling a collection of their antique vehicles that they were using in production movies, and this was one of them. The condition was real nice. Uh, there was no rust on the body. The car sat for quite a few years. Back in 80, 1989, this was a feature vehicle in a movie, Sunset. The Chicago Police Department had in their fleet 1928 Cadillacs because of the powerful engines. Also, it was well known that Al Capone also had one identical to this, the identical body style. This 1928 Cadillac body style is very rare. There's only three known. This is one of three registered with the Cadillac LaSalle Club of America. This body style of this 1928 Cadillac is called a town sedan. The Piercero, Packards, Rolls Royces, Stutzes were comparable in prices and in value and in quality and luxury. I had the uh, radiator shell, a lot of the accessories that were originally nickel plated, chrome plated. Uh, back in 1928 was the last year that nickel plated was available for vehicles. Uh, 1929 is the first year that chrome actually become available for cars. I had the uh, shock absorbers rebuilt, they're Lovejoy hydraulic shock absorbers. And they're held in place with this webbing that my wife fabricated that's no longer available, but we found some and she fabricated for the shocks. Okay. The wheels on this are called Buffalo Wire Wheels, which was an optional uh, wheel at the time. The Buffalo Wire Wheels, there was just one big hubcap that held the entire wheel on, and you needed a special tool to remove them. The Cleveland Historical Society uh, Crawford Auto Museum let me borrow an original wrench, a Buffalo wheel wrench, and I had uh, remanufactured one just to take the wheels off. The engine is a 341 cubic inch flathead V8. It's uh, 110 horsepower. It's got an updraft Johnson carburetor, which was all rebuilt. The exhaust manifolds were actually porcelain plated. Uh, again, the, all the luxury cars, the exhaust manifolds were porcelain to keep the heat within the exhaust manifold so it, the heat doesn't dissipate. The interior of my car is 100% original. Uh, it's in real nice condition, but we decided we're still going to redo it. It was a standard package uh, and almost, it was a broadcloth interior originally. I've been working on this car for approximately three years. Uh, I'm hoping in the next two years it should be completed. A friend of mine purchased this car to restore, he lost interest in it, and as soon as I seen the car, I definitely wanted it in my collection. I'm kind of stuck in the 1920s and 1930s cars. I enjoy working on them, they're easy to work on. Sometimes the parts are hard to come by. 
In the next couple years, I hope to complete the restoration. I'm looking forward to showing this off at the concourse in the larger car shows in Northern Ohio. For the first year or two, I'll probably trailer this car until it starts getting some wear on it, then I drive my cars. These cars are built to drive, and that's what I intend to do. Well, that's my 1930 Model A Ford. I've had that car for a little over 45 years. Uh, got a real history to it. My brother actually uh, bought that car years ago. He's the car man in the family. And, uh, he, but he never kept a car very long, so he paid 450 bucks for that car. Drove it home, kept it a few months, and offered to sell it to me. So I bought it for the same price, 450 bucks. But uh, my brother's a little bit of a con artist, so he made me sign an agreement that if I ever sold it again, I'd have to sell it back to him for the original $450 price. Of course, it didn't look like this when I bought it, and any improvements I put into it didn't matter. He still gets it first offer for the same $450 price. We had a lot of fun with the car when the kids were growing up. It didn't, as I said, it didn't look like this. It was kind of beat up. Uh, the, the paint was faded, had some dings, dents, some rust in it, uh, but it was fun. It was a fun car to drive. And, it started looking a, a little rough. The floorboards were starting to rot and there was some uh, surface rust that was getting a, a, a bad. And I had let it sit for quite a while. So I decided either I'm gonna get rid of it or I'm gonna put some money into it and fix it up. Well, it was like a member of the family. I've had the car so long, I just couldn't get rid of it. So I decided to put the money into it. And I did, and it's a complete frame up restoration done on that car. When it gets near the end, you get a little anxious to see what it's going to look like. So uh, near the end, we, we were kind of pushing a little bit to get it done. But it, it came out better than I imagined it would. That's the way it sits today. It's probably one of the more beautiful Model A's you'll find around. I kept as much original parts to it as I could. No, it's not all original, um, but as much as possible I kept. Uh, the windshield, I even kept the glass as original, but the windshield and one, one door uh, glass is not original. Other than that, it is. Anything that we could rework and, and keep the fenders, body, all, all of that is original. And it's, but, uh, there's a few parts here and there that, uh, that are not. The, the bumpers are original. We've had them re-chromed. Like I said, anything we could, uh, we could salvage on it from original parts we kept. I picked a color. This is close to an original color. Uh, originally, this car was black. It was a standard coupe, uh, which means it was pretty much uh, stripped down as it comes out of the factory. Uh, but um, contrary to popular belief, model A's actually did come in different colors, and this was close to one of the original colors. And a little nicer than the original, I think. It's got a very distinctive horn on it called the Uga horn. Uh, actually, it was called a signal device back in those days, I'm told, by some of the old timers. And when you hear that horn, you know it's a Model A coming down the street. So when the people are waving at you, they want you to beat that horn. We always do. It, it, like I say, we get some smiles from that. This, it, the engine has a very distinct sound to it, too. And this one runs very well. Everything that we could do to this car to make it right, we did. I just love the style of this car. I think the Model A was one of the most beautiful cars ever built. I just like the headlights, the, the way it looks. It, it just, this car just appealed to me. And like I say, after I've had it so long, it became like a member of the family. The kids grew up with this car. I just, I just couldn't get rid of it. So my brother's still going to have some time to wait if he wants to buy the car back. So I don't think I'll sell it to him. You know, it's fun to drive it. People, for some reason, when you see a Model A, Model T drive by, they think they have to wave at you. So we get a lot of waves and a lot of smiles. And I, I think it's because it kind of makes them think of, a, you know, maybe a, a different time in America. And, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel good to see people uh, get a little enjoyment out of something that you, you own and you drive by. Every now and then you'll see a, a whole group of Model A's driving. So there's, there's Model A clubs. I don't, I don't belong to one, but there are Model A clubs out there. And it's nice to keep in touch with them because if you do have a problem, you can call somebody in the club and believe me, they've had the same problem with the car or somebody in the club has, and they can tell you how to fix it or what, what you need to do to correct it. So it's, it's handy to have them around uh, and they keep the tradition going. And uh, they're in a lot of shows and that. So anywhere in the country, yeah, that's another thing. Anywhere in the country, you'll find a Model A someplace because uh, people just love to drive them, love to see them. In 1928, Cadillac introduced the first clashless synchro mesh manual transmission using constant mesh gears. 
Cruising Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics, returns after this. Blue Line Classics wants to buy your classic car. We buy excellent condition classic antique and muscle cars and offer consignment services. We have an established customer base of eager buyers, and for consignment cars, we offer first-class marketing efforts with an impressive 100% sell-through rate. If you have a classic or muscle car you'd like to sell or take advantage of our consignment service, visit our website, bluelineclassics.com, or give us a call. Selling your classic does not have to be a painful process. Give Blue Line Classics a call and start selling your classic today. Welcome back to Cruise In, Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics. I always enjoy bringing a car from the 50s into our collection. The cars from the 50s are my favorite automobiles. These cars were covered from front to back in chrome. From the wraparound windshields to the wide white white walls, these cars are just a mark of elegance. This 1955 Buick Century is no exception to that. It was recently added to our collection. This Buick is an original 60,000 mile survivor. It's extremely clean from top to bottom. This car is covered in chrome, from the big bullet bumpers in the front to the big chrome bumpers in the back. This Buick still displays its original paint from 1955. This car is what we consider a true survivor. Like they say, they're only original once. This Buick still holds its original interior. From the big beautiful dashboard to the oversized steering wheel with the Buick emblem in the middle. When you're driving this car, it's like driving your living room couch down the road. The interior of this car was made for comfort. The vent windows in this car provided you with a breeze as this car wasn't equipped with air conditioning. This car also still holds its original AM radio. And as always noted for Buick, the four portholes on the side of the fenders. You knew when you seen those coming down the road that the person behind the wheel was driving a Buick. Wanting better performance, in 1955, Buick introduced its most powerful motor, the 322 cubic V8 engine, which this car has in it today. From the front, this car looks like it's coming at you with its mouth wide open. From the eyebrowed headlights to the wide front grille, it's a thing of beauty to see go down the road. This car goes down the road like a dream. It starts smooth and still stops on a dime. And it's always nice to get the thumbs up when other people see it chugging down the road. Welcome to the Collector's Showcase. This 1972 Pontiac Le Mans is a class winner in the 2011 Pontiac Nationals in Norwalk, Ohio, as well as placing third in the 2014 Concourse d'Elegance at Stan Hewitt Hall in Akron, Ohio. It's a gorgeous frame-off restoration with under 1,000 miles since completion. Mechanically extremely sound, this car drives, stops, and handles excellently, and you can drive it anywhere. This is a very clean, very solid car that is a proven award winner. This 1975 Triumph TR6 is absolutely gorgeous. The frame-off nut and bolt restoration is fully documented, including a certified copy of the British Motor Industry Heritage Trust Factory record. Every aspect of the restoration was professionally completed. The car is truly a very high-end build with the comfort and reliability to use for touring or trips. The attention to detail throughout the build is unsurpassed. For information on these or any of the cars in our inventory, give us a call or visit our website, bluelineclassics.com. Incorporated as the Buick Motor Company on May 19, 1903, Buick is currently the oldest active North American automaker and among the oldest automobile brands in the world. Cruise In Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics, returns in a moment. Now, back to Cruise In Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics. What you're looking at is a 1987 Buick Grand National. Grand National was the fastest production car built in 1987. Anybody that recalls the 80s knows it was a barren wasteland when it became the automotive performance certainly one of the hottest, baddest, and most collectible American production vehicles ever built. The original horsepower was denoted as 240 for insurance purposes in 1987 by GM. 
Anybody that's ever driven one of these cars knows that the horsepower is sincerely underrated. 240 just didn't cut it. Grand Nationals were produced from the years 1982 to 1987. 87 was the biggest production year. Actually, by the end of the summer of 87, sales had practically doubled from the previous year. The MSRP on these cars was $15,136. The car is equipped with a 3.8 liter turbocharged V6 backed by a 204R automatic transmission. This particular car has a bit larger of a turbo. It has a TE61 turbo along with the competition's cam as well as a seventh injector system routed into the intake plenum. This car far exceeds the stock horsepower rated at 240. My guesstimate would be close to 400 by the time the uh, modifications were done on this car. The only upgrade from the Grand National was the famous GNX. Those cars are extremely rare. If you look at the Grand National emblem, it's a symbol of a turbo. These cars are intercooled, turbocharged, make a lot of power. You notice the wheels on the Grand National, they're different from the T-types. The Grand Nationals have the turbo logo, they're highly sought after. The interior of Grand Nationals were all the same, they were gray and black, two-tone. This particular car has a 100% original paint, interior, and undercarriage, with just only a few tasteful upgrades. This particular car is a complete rocket. I've driven the stock ones before, and this one puts them to shame. There are a few reasons we added this car to our collection. First off being, this was my high school prom car. My brother-in-law had one of these and he let me take it to prom. Second being, I grew up during this era and I always remembered seeing these cars go down the road. Our 59 Buick convertible is a rare, pampered, gorgeous survivor. With less than 75,000 original miles, this is definitely an investment grade car. The LeSabre nameplate made its first appearance in 1951 which introduced the world to an aircraft-inspired design, such as the wraparound windshield and the big tail fins. This 1959 Buick LeSabre is powered by a 364 cubic inch V8, which is actually smaller than the 401 cubic inch V8 used in the more expensive Buick models. As you can see, this Buick still holds a lot of beauty in chrome, but not as much as the Buick from 1955. This 59 Buick convertible still holds its original interior, with a built-in tissue dispenser under the dash. Paint, chrome, stainless trim, glass, and convertible top are in outstanding condition. The vinyl bench seats in this car can handle up to six passengers comfortably. These large, luxurious cars were true family rides in their day. Many families would enjoy a Sunday afternoon drive with the top down and the wind blowing through their hair. This land yacht with the large tail fins is comparable to some of the other luxury cars in its day. We always enjoy driving a car from the 50s. That's why we added this one to our collection. From the outstanding chrome, to the drop top, to the wide white walls, and the large tail fins, it's a real pleasure to drive down the road. The original Buick Motor Company was a cornerstone in the establishment of General Motors in 1908. Cruising Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics, continues after this. Blue Line Classics wants to buy your classic car. We buy excellent condition classic antique and muscle cars and offer consignment services. We have an established customer base of eager buyers, and for consignment cars, we offer first-class marketing efforts with an impressive 100% sell-through rate. If you have a classic or muscle car you'd like to sell or take advantage of our consignment service, visit our website, bluelineclassics.com, or give us a call. Selling your classic does not have to be a painful process. Give Blue Line Classics a call and start selling your classic today. Welcome back to Cruise In, Collector's Edition, presented by Blue Line Classics. Aretha Franklin and Bruce Springsteen, they made this car famous, the pink Cadillac. This is a 1960 Cadillac Coupe de Ville Series 60. 60 Cadillacs exhibit a lot smoother, more subtle rendition of the styling theme introduced one year earlier in 1959. The 60s had a full width grille. They eliminated the front bumper regards. There's an increased restraint in the application of chrome trim throughout the car. The 1960 also exhibited lower tail fins with oval shaped nacelles, which enclosed stacked taillights and backup lamps. 
The Series 60 as well as the 62 had a V8 with overhead valves. It bore 390 cubic inches, had a cast iron block. The 1960 model year was an impressive beginning to a new decade for Cadillac. During the 60s, Chief Engineer Bill Mitchell gradually unified the design, became more graceful and restrained as from the 50s. The standard of the world, the American public, Cadillac remained a symbol of prestige, success, and good taste, as it still commands respect today. The 60 Caddy had a much more formal yet youthful look than the 59. It was toned down just a bit from the rear tail lights to the front end. The 50s and 60s Cadillacs were complete luxury. With the windows up, the interior became hushed and more like a living room on wheels. This was the last year for air suspension and wraparound windshields, except the Series 75 Fleetwood models. You'll notice this 1960 has every bullet in the grill that it came from from the factory, which is very rare. These break off and they're extremely hard to find, and when you do find them, they're extremely pricey. This particular 1960 Cadillac has just over 50,000 original miles. It's had two owners in the last 40 years. We're the second. It has a leather interior with a cloth inlay. The interior is 100% original, as well as the headliner, all the door panels, the dash. This particular car is an automatic, as they all were in the Cadillacs back in 1960. It's got a shifter on the column. It drives like a new one. We upgraded this Cadillac and put radial tires on there. The bias plies just don't cut it anymore. This, this particular Cadillac is painted in a pearl pink. It's not an original factory color, but it's very close. This car weighed a ton, actually more than two tons. It weighed in at 4,670 pounds. The cost was just over a dollar a pound. Factory price was $4,892 for the base model. The reason I added this car to our collection because of the classy lines and the classy looks. Everybody loves the 59 and 60 Cadillacs. And pink's the color to have. Thanks for watching. We'd like to thank our fathers for sharing their cars with us today and always being supportive in everything we do. This here's a 20 Model T you might see in a future episode. We'll see you in two weeks. If you'd like to share your collector car with the cruising audience, give us a call. 303-566-1500.